This is 17 News with continuing coronavirus coverage. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Gitsky. Well, Governor Gavin Newsom is streaming live every day at noon to provide an update for the coronavirus crisis here in our state. Today, he's talking about the state's response to the coronavirus pandemic here in California. We will bring him to you as soon as he becomes available. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. New numbers are in. Kern Public Health has announced 28 new COVID-19 cases just this morning, bringing the county total to 680. As of today, the department said 262 people have recovered from the virus and 385 are self-isolating at home. An additional 21 people are isolated at a hospital. 3,619 people in Kern County are still waiting for their results. That's nearly half of all the pending tests in the state. The area known as Bakersfield East, which includes parts of Arvin and Lamont, has 342 cases. Now, Governor Gavin Newsom is set to speak. Let's take it over to him and hear what he has to say. Of today's announcement, a spirit uh, that defines Californians for all, a new website that we're launching uh, to initiate a much more comprehensive approach to capturing that spirit of generosity, the spirit of contribution, the spirit of service that resides in millions and millions of Californians, to organize this in a deliberative way so people can share their action and passion in a more deliberative and ultimately a more impactful way. Uh, we've developed partnerships uh, with nonprofits throughout the state of California. We've organized uh, agencies within the state of California in a much more prescriptive way. And we've launched this initiative in order to launch uh, an army of volunteers to express themselves day in and day out uh, as only Californians can, not only to meet this moment, but to prepare to meet subsequent moments, uh, to organize a volunteer corps uh, in a way that is much more deliberative than we have in the past. There is so much uh, inside of us in terms of our capacity to give and to serve, not just sacrifice in this moment, to do a little bit more to perhaps uh, deliver a meal do a little bit more to reach out to uh, late neighbors or loved ones, to check in on seniors, to help disabled uh, individuals with groceries or uh, other essential needs, to provide hygiene kits, not just to donate blood, though, to donate blood, to participate and volunteer at the food bank, which, by the way, has lost roughly 70 percent of its volunteers uh, since the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, we're trying to organize this site uh, in a way that's more robust, more interactive, uh, and do so in a way uh, where we can maintain a two-way conversation. Uh, rather than you initiating your interest in participating and volunteering, uh, we want to make sure we stay engaged with you. Uh, regardless of your time of life, it's all about a state of mind. From our Zoomers to our Boomers, uh, regardless of your age or stage in life, we want you to volunteer, we want you to participate, and we want to match those efforts in a way that gives meaning and purpose uh, to this endeavor. Uh, I love to say this because it's always true. Uh, the happiest people I know are the people that volunteer. Uh, and I've long believed that no one stands taller than when he or she bends down on one knee to help lift other people up. So this is a spirit of communitarianism, individuals contributing to their community. Uh, it's the spirit of recognition uh, that we're all in this together. It's the spirit that has allowed California to bend the curve because it's a spirit that demonstrably is at scale in the state of California with tens of millions of Californians that are practicing physical distancing, uh, that regardless of their political stripe, or where they are geographically, overwhelmingly are staying at home uh, and have allowed us the opportunity uh, to be at this point in time uh, where just tomorrow we'll start laying out some more prescriptive guidelines and update you uh, on the next phase uh, as it relates to iterations uh, in terms of our capacity uh, to begin to loosen up our stay-at-home orders uh, in a very phased and appropriate way. But as we walked into this together, uh, we want to begin to walk 
out of this together as well, meeting this moment with that same spirit, that generosity of spirit. And we have just the right person uh, to lead that endeavor. Our chief service officer in the state of California, former lieutenant in the Navy, former council member and mayor, uh, and someone uh, I've gotten to know and admire over the course of many, many years who leads our volunteer efforts in the state of California and will lead this new initiative, Californians.ca.gov, uh, Californians for All. .ca.gov initiative uh, through this pandemic and into the future. Josh Friday. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for your leadership and commitment to service. Thank you to your wife, the first partner, Jen Siebel Newsom, and the chair of our commission, California Volunteers, for being a champion of creating a culture of me to we here in California. And thank you to the incredible team at California Volunteers who has worked so hard to protect our communities and inspire all of us. And to all the volunteers who have made a difference throughout the last several weeks, thank you for what you've done. I'm here today excited as Chief Service Officer for the State of California to launch a new initiative, Californians for All, where we are asking all Californians who are healthy to stand up, to step up, and to help connect and make a difference in your community. Here's how it's going to work. We want every Californian that can and is healthy and able to visit californiansforall.ca.gov. And when you go to this site, we've made it very easy for you to make a difference in your community. We want you to sign up and tell us when you sign up what interests you. What issues do you want to work on in your community? Where would you like to make a difference? And once you sign up, we are going to be communicating with you regularly, weekly emails, to make sure that you're connected to not just state priorities, but to local priorities and opportunities. You could sign up for food banks, for delivering meals, for tutoring, for helping at shelter facilities, and many other activities. We will also be sharing other content that you can use to make a difference no matter where you are and where you want to connect. We are also asking everyone to please follow the guidance that has been given to us by the Department of Public Health. And we provide this on this web website, californiansforall.ca.gov, so that you can volunteer safely and make a difference safely in your community. We are working with a new statewide coalition of nonprofits, think incredible groups like the Red Cross, United Ways, the California Food Banks Association, volunteer centers around the state to connect you after you sign up at californiansforall.ca.gov to local opportunities. So please go to our website and join us today. If you're healthy and you can make a difference in your community, we need you at food banks, we need you giving blood, we need you delivering meals, and we need you joining us. If you want to stay at home to be safe, you can still make an enormous difference in our state and communities everywhere by signing up to be a 211 operator or signing up to help with EITC outreach or checking on a neighbor. We're going to be challenging young people throughout the state to check on neighbors and check on a loved one and share a video online to challenge your fellow peers to do the same. So as the governor said, we are going to defeat COVID apart, but we are going to emerge from this stronger because we do it together. We need you and we need each other. So thank you for joining us at californiansforall.ca.gov. Thank you, Josh. And, uh, and it's wonderful to have a, a chief service officer uh, in a state of California. And uh, again, that's the spirit of building a framework, the architecture for uh, civic infrastructure that ultimately, uh, again, will outlast this moment and allow us to rebuild uh, our economy at the same time we rebuild the spirit of California that defines, I think, the best in us. Uh, so this is a, a real opportunity uh, for those that may uh, have not necessarily been ready uh, to jump in yet and volunteer, or just didn't necessarily know how. Uh, this is a dynamic website. It allows you to connect 
uh, with your uh, prescriptive passions and connect them uh, to specific needs in your community. It's a bottom-up framework, not top-down. So we want to meet you where you are uh, and help you meet others uh, so ultimately uh, we can create the kind of dynamic uh, sense uh, of commonality that ultimately uh, will get us through this moment. So thank you to Josh, thank you to his team, and thank you all Californians that are uh, willing to participate, their time and energy uh, at this moment. Uh, let me speak uh, in terms of what moment we are in as it relates to the current pandemic, as we do every day, uh, update you uh, on a number of issues related to the pandemic, not least of which the number of new positives, number of deaths. You just heard the latest from Governor Gavin Newsom talking about the state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. He talks about the importance of volunteering right now, helping those in most need. They did mention that they are organizing a site that is called Californians for All. And if for all those healthy, they are asked to go onto that site and apply to help those in need. Also, Governor Gavin Newsom mentioned that tomorrow they will be laying out guidelines and the next steps for loosening up the stay-at-home orders that will all be laid out tomorrow in his wrap up. Now you can continue watching Governor Newsom's whole live stream on our Facebook page. Now in your 17 crime watch, Bakersfield police are trying to track down the person who posted a child porn video during a Zoom meeting for Bakersfield College. Yesterday afternoon, the college hosted a public Zoom meeting about the institution's response to COVID-19. BC says during that meeting, an anonymous user posted a video depicting child pornography. The user was removed from the meeting and the incident reported to the police. Bakersfield police are now working with BC and the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force to find the person who sent it. Zoom has had issues in the past with cybersecurity. That video chat platform has now ramped up security efforts. And in your education news now, Kern High School District is rolling out new guidelines on how students will receive grades because of the COVID-19 pandemic. KHSD says it will adopt a pass, no pass system for grading during the 2019-2020 spring semester. If the student had an A, B, C, or D in a class at the time of the school closure, this will count as a passing grade. If the student had an F in a class that counts as a failing grade, the system is also in effect for classes during the summer 2020 session. And let's check in on today's 17 Interactive Feedback Poll. We've been asking, should local teachers grade their students differently because of the coronavirus? Nearly 250 of you have voted so far. 55% of you have said yes. 45% of you have said no. Now here's a look at some of your comments. Someone sent us this text. I do think there should be different grading due to COVID-19. However, the pass, no pass shouldn't be the answer. I have a real problem with the D. Students that had a D or F should be encouraged to bring that grade up. And another text reads, no, our son does his work, classwork every day and has access to tutoring if needed. He is responsible for getting work done and being part of Zoom on time. If we show them that they get a freebie when times get tough, they will think they should get one anytime things are tough and that's not how life works. Now, there is still time for you to weigh in. You can call or text 888-4617. Press 1 if you think teachers should grade differently, and 2 if not. You can also tweet, email, or Facebook your comments. We will have more of your comments and updates, the votes, coming up tonight at 6.30. Stay with us. 17 News is back after this. Welcome back and good afternoon, Kern County. We've got some clouds out there. Let's talk about the weather forecast. And as we go throughout the next seven days, it'll be a great time to maybe illustrate some chalk art on the sidewalk out, outside your home. Right now we're at 61 degrees and we've got cloudy skies in uh, Arvin right now. And then we take you to Wasco and we still have a little bit of cloud cover, but also seeing some sunshine. 66 degrees on the temperature. And then Fraser Park, we've got partly to mostly cloudy skies and 49. And then out of Golden Hills, we've got some fog they're dealing with right now and even uh, in the downtown to Hatchby area visibility is at one mile. This is uh, expected to lift as we progress into the afternoon though. 64 in Bakersfield right now. No winds to talk about and as we take a look at the almanac overnight we're at 51. Four degrees off the normal. Normal high today 77. As we take a look at other numbers and we've got 50s and 60s for the valley and uh, 40s and 50s into the mountains to Hatchby 45. 56 for Lake Isabella. 71 already in Ridgecrest. Uh, 
up near from Butt Willow, Lost Hills, Delano. We are in the clear, but again, we've got clouds uh, kind of encompassing the south into the valley. This is typical when a system exits, we get a lot of pile-up clouds. And so that's what we're looking at. It expands all the way into the Tehachapi area. And then you exit uh, along the 58 into the desert, and we are clear again. So we are expecting these clouds to continue to erode as we go throughout the afternoon. And tomorrow, you're looking sunny. Highs today, right near 68 in Sacramento, 74 in Fresno, 73 in Los Angeles, with upper 60s in San Diego. High pressure is going to start to build on in here the next few days. And so any type of storm system will ride to the north. Futurecast uh, HD, nothing coming into California in the short term. Maybe a few clouds uh, late into Saturday and Sunday, but that will be it. So here's a look at your big headlines. Starting out cloudy as we're seeing right now, but we will continue to see the clearing throughout the day. High pressure builds in, and that means we are warming up. First 90-degree day since October 8, 2019 could arrive this Saturday. Here's a look at today, though. We are dealing with some clouds still, and then this afternoon we should be looking at some sunshine. 72 in Bay. 75 in Delano, Button will load 74 for the mountains. Temperatures will be right near 57 in Fraser Park, along with Tehachapi. 60s into the Kern River Valley, 65 Lake Isabella. And I've got 57 out there for Tehachapi, but we may have to, they may be a little cooler because of the uh, low lying clouds that you are experiencing right now. And then for the desert, sunny and 69 in Mojave. Here's your extended forecast. Tomorrow, 80 and sunny, 82 on Thursday, 86 on Friday, and look at Saturday, 91. And then a little cooler by next Monday when we're back into the mid-80s, but definitely a warm-up on the way. Mountain forecast also, lots of sunshine on the way with warmer temperatures. By Saturday, you're at 78, and then by Monday, we'll be right near 73. And the Kern River Valley forecast clearing you out and warming you up as well. You're going to peak on Saturday with the mid-80s, and then by next Monday, you'll be back into the lower 80s. So definitely a warm-up. Again, I'm looking out my window right now, and I've got a mix of sun and clouds, but I hope everybody has a good rest of the afternoon. We'll be right back. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. In your 17 Business Watch, a day after oil prices hit a historic low, falling into negative numbers, things were mixed this morning, improving on some fronts, worsening on others. West Texas Intermediate, the nation's benchmark crude, opened at negative $14 a barrel, up from a bizarre low of less than negative $37 a barrel at one point yesterday. Last we checked this yes, or this morning, WTI was up to $5.39 a barrel a 141% increase from its opening page. But the price of Chevron's Midway Sunset Oil hit an all-time low, $12.86 a barrel, a 5% drop from yesterday's already miserable price. And Brent crude, which the county of Kern uses to establish oil field property tax levels, was down 8% to $24.07 and falling. It's all due to plummeting demand caused by the coronavirus pandemic. No one is driving their cars, and increased commercial truck activity is not making up for it. Refineries and oil storage facilities are full and can't take any more product. Kathy Reheis of the Western State Petroleum Association says these circumstances are unprecedented. And I've never seen uh, the industry get hit from both sides of the business at once. So not only are we having the global oil price issue on the production side, but then on the refining side, we have complete, you know, a lot of demand destruction. So obviously people aren't using the product. So we can't produce it. We can't store it. We can't sell it. We have So we're basically boxed in on both sides. And I've never seen it. Never seen this ever. Kern relies on oil production not only for thousands of jobs, but for its property tax base as well. The good news is that the county doesn't establish property tax values until January 1st, so the price still has time to rebound. European stocks take a hit after oil prices tank in the United States. What that means for them. And South Korean baseball is set to begin May 5th without any fans. A look around the world is right after this. Taking a look around the world, European stocks fell today as the double whammy from a crash in the U.S. crude to nearly minus $40 per barrel and dismal first quarter earning reports spooked investors about the lasting damage to the global economy from the coronavirus pandemic. 
All major European country indexes slipped a day after U.S. crude plummeted to below zero for the first time in history without a wipeout in storage capacity, causing traders to flee contracts that would deliver oil barrels to them in May. Markets across Europe were down about 2% in the early trading. Well, Germans returned to shops yesterday craving retail therapy after a month of lockdown, but Chancellor Angela Merkel urged them to remain disciplined to avoid a relapse in the fight against the coronavirus. Some towns and organizations have introduced obligatory masks, including certain public transport companies and smaller shops in Hanau, as a local bookshop was finally allowed to reopen. Customers and employees were asked to wear masks. The federal and state government have strongly recommended that Germans wear face masks when shopping and on public transport, and in some states have even made that compulsory. Germans have the, fi the fifth highest COVID-19 caseload behind the United States, Spain, Italy, and France, but has kept fatalities down thanks to early and intensive testing and has only a third of the deaths of New York City alone. Well, South Korea's professional baseball organization said today it will open its regular season on May 5th, but without spectators. The Korean baseball organization announced that it will begin its league without public access. The KBO said it will gradually open the games to fans once the organization decides that the threats of COVID-19 disease are largely reduced. On the same day, the KBO held a preseason practice game between Deuce and Bears and LG Twins at a stadium in Seoul behind the closed doors. This is 17 News with continuing coronavirus coverage.